This is Molly Quinn. Hi. Um, she played Esme, uh, the uh, lead role in The Sacrifice. <laughs> and um, we're just going to talk a little bit today okay. about our experience when we were there right. and what made you decide to make that movie. Okay. You who, you who are in great demand. <laughs> I wouldn't say great demand, <laughs> but... Well, tell me, what, uh, what, was, the, what was the reason? What, what made you pick it? Well, it wasn't just how interesting all the characters react. For me, it was that this is a crime that really goes on, and this story really needs to be told. People need to know about this, and that's what really drew me to it, and I'm just so lucky and blessed that you guys thought that I'd do a good enough job. Okay, let's point out that you did a, more than a good enough job. You did a magnificent job. Well, thank you. Because your face lights up the screen. You did a ma an amazing, amazing job of showing the vulnerability well, I'm an amazing of director, stuff. you know. That's why I asked her to come. I have an amazing director. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, and co-stars, I mean, they're all wonderful. They are. Mm -hmm. They were great. And actually, what John said about you, because I asked him about the dynamic okay. between the two of you. <laughs> no, he said a lovely thing. He said that you have a gift for being accessible um, when you're on the screen and that that makes the dynamic with you on screen that much easier. You like Esme, I just, I can't believe that this is really happening. I can't believe that this can really go on. And so when, to, to access what needed to be in you to play Esme, which you do most effectively and most compellingly, um, do you want to talk a little bit about how you did that? Because you, you did. Well, you would ask for some of my uh, childhood photos, and so what I had done even before that is I'd look through everything, and I'd look through how happy and carefree I was and the wonderful relationship I have with my own parents, and I said to myself, what if, in a brief second, all this is gone? All this is gone, and I'm thrown into a situation that is not normal, that's terrifying. What, how, would, how would I react? When I first met Chris, I told myself, okay, I'm going to keep him as the character. I'm not going to get close to him. I'm going to treat him that way. He comes up to me. He's like, hey, hi, I'm Chris. And I'm like, gosh darn it. He's not supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so every time he'd make a joke, like when the scene was done, he'd say, you squished the tomato. Oh, you did. And it was just, he's such a charismatic, fun guy. In fact, he went to go see Dragon Wars with me. The gun scene. How is that for you? Because I know that that's not a normal... That every day not, kind of thing to do. No, no. Um, I've never had a bad experience with a gun. Um, but holding, especially that was like a really real gun. And so just holding that in my hand and just feeling the heaviness, I was just like, I could really kill him. I know you've done a lot of different work. Not all of it is sequential. Part of what we did for this shoot was to try to make it sequential yes. so that the emotions went from scene mm -hmm. to scene during the course of the shoot mm -hmm. and that you didn't have to go backwards and try to muster a, a, an emotion that was not necessarily what you were feeling based on what had happened before. How did that work for you? That was so much better. I mean, on a lot of things I work on, they don't do that. It's so out of sequence and it really it messes me up a little bit. You know, like I can handle it. But this way was so much easier, you know, everything evolved and it it was perfect because like you go from the beginning all the way to the end and it, since it's all in sequence, it's like I was really living this life. Like I was really es Esme. Let's talk a little bit about the song, okay, song. because that was so much by chance and yeah. how fortunate was I to have everybody there and doing everything that they were and then to have you just as a result of whatever reason singing that song which has now become an integral part 